So, we are, we are now going to, to look at what we can put in this box and see some, uh, some implementation. So, here at the physical layer, so we, we saw, I give you already a, a definition of a physical layer. It says that the only thing I can send remotely is a modulation. Okay, I have a signal. And if I want to, I have a support, a cable, optical fiber. And if I want to send information, I have to change a state somewhere to carry this information. So it's a modulation. And if the other guy understands correctly the modulation, then I can put on that modulation some binary values. And so if the real guy has the same protocol, then from the modulation, he can also uh, recover the binary value I was sent. So that's what I want to do. But of course, I need, I, have, I need some properties on the signal I will send. So we are going to to see the, these properties, not in too many details, because that's not the, the goal of, of this class. So, first, what I say here is wrong. It's wrong, but it's what people believe. So, we have to say it, because when we say physical layer, it's what you will believe. You will understand. But in fact, it's not really what that was defined in the OSI model. In the OSI model, you have your computer. So it was called DTE, just not to call it computer. And you have a modem. And it was not called modem, but DCE, just not to call it modem, but something that nobody understands to be uh, uh, totally generic. And what the OSI model was defining is the interface between your DTE and your DC, your computer and your model. So it defines the plug you are using and what uh, and the meaning of each plug and meaning of uh, and the signal you can send on it. And that's very important because if you come from a country uh, using, uh, if you want to plug your, uh, something on the electrical power and you don't have the right plug, it doesn't work. So the first thing you have to standardize is how you connect physically to the cable. So that's what is done first at layer one is to say that. If, for example, if your Ethernet plug is not the, size, not the same size on each computer, then you cannot connect everywhere. So we have to define the plug. Then what we are sending, so the plug is composed of the copper wire, so what we can send on copper wire. So we had one interface that you find in old computer. It was this kind of uh, plug with uh, 21 uh, uh, plugs that allow you to send things. Of course, this, you can find that on PCs, but uh, old PCs, but now you have only USB, so you, you don't see the, this kind of thing. And so you have this, and also how you send the information. So. For example, you have one very popular way to communicate with, between DTE and DCE. It's what we call the AT command. So, this is very old fashioned. If you may imagine a very old modem connected to a laptop. Oh, sorry, to a PC. But in fact, it's not so old fashioned. If you look at your uh, iPhone, it's what you have. You have your iPhone. So what is your iPhone? It's a CPU with a nice screen, an OS, an operating system. So it's a line, uh, Unix operating system that manages your screen, your uh, everything on your mobile phone, but not your phone calls. When you do a phone call, or you open the data connection, 
then you have to call an entity inside your iPhone that will talk with the GSM network or the 3G network. And what people call broadband in, uh, in, uh, in Apple computer. And what you do is that, in fact, your Linux will communicate with this equipment using AT common. So when you compose a number on your screen, the GR number, then it is com uh, combined in AT common and you send it to this equipment. Then you receive an OK, for example, if this uh, device understands correctly the information. And so it means that this way you can, you have no access, it's a black box theory. It means that you don't access to what you have inside, you cannot change it. You just have interactions that are defined here using this AT style command. So this is, for example, for uh, iPhone or all the mobile phones. So you, you find this kind of thing. If you want to, to work on some project we are doing at uh, Telecom Brotag, we are working now a lot on Internet of Things. And we, you have also, for example, some equipment called Arduino. So here it's much more open. So where you have a small CPU, and you, for example, you have the sensor here that can measure, for example, how much electricity you are using. And we want to communicate with other equipment. So we add another card here. This card is for telecommunication. And how we communicate between this card on our board here is using AT command to say, OK, send a packet to that destination. So it's something that is, uh, looks quite old fashioned, but is uh, very used right now. But it's hidden inside your operating system. So you don't uh, see it uh, usually. So that's the real definition of the layer one just to talk with the entity that can do the modulation. But don't do the modulation by ourselves. In fact, he doesn't, nobody says that. In practice, everybody says the layer one is doing the modulation. That's not true, but it's why everybody believes. So it's what we will believe right now. So the problem is we have to say how we modulate the signal. And of course, we have a lot of uh, property when we are doing modulation, signal modulation. For example, I want to have the less error rate as possible on my link. Because if I have too many errors, my computer will not be able to correct them. So or my data link will not work. So I have to find a good code, uh, coding scheme for that. So of course, coding scheme will be different if I am in optical fiber, in, in copper, or using radio. Then I have also to avoid interferences. To avoid interferences between different communication I, will, I may have on the same link, but maybe also with other systems. For example, if I am sending uh, Ethernet uh, signal on a cable, and this Ethernet signal is stopping my telephony system on another cable, we will have a problem. So we have to find a way to avoid this kind of interference. We need also, and it's a property we are going to see in more detail, we need clock synchronization. What does it mean? It means that I have to send information to another equipment. And this other equipment, piece of equipment doesn't have the same clock as me. And of course, it's very difficult to get some precise, very, very precise clock on each equipment. And the temperature in the room may influence how my clock is working. So it means that here it's quite hot, so my quartz can go very faster. When I'm sending to a computer that is located in an air-conditioned room, and here the clock will behave differently. 
So we cannot have exact clock. So in the signal, we need to, to put some way to synchronize sender and receiver. So we have two, two ways to do things. If I have a cable, I can use what I call baseband. Baseband means that I'm going to use all the possibility, all the frequencies on my cable. If, for example, what is doing Ethernet? You have an Ethernet uh, signal, and what do you do is to send a square signal on your Ethernet cable. So if you know about Fourier, you know that a square signal is an infinite it's composed of a lot of infinities and a number of frequencies. It means that here I am using all the frequencies of the cable. It means that I cannot send other things on my cable. It's my cable is just dedicated to Ethernet. So it's what we call uh, baseband. On the other hand, I can have a cable and I want to share with two technologies. For example, ADSL. In ADSL, we have some frequencies for the pot, same old telephone system. Yes. And I have frequencies for ADSL. Over frequency will be dedicated. So I cannot send a square signal for ADSL because I'm using all the frequency and I will have uh, some interference with the pot. So here I have to define how many frequencies I can use. Of course, when I am doing radio, I have also to use a limited spectrum. So I have to use frequencies. So it's what we call broadband, and we use only some frequencies. So broadband is more expensive to do because I have to do some uh, signal processing, but I don't have to do in baseband. But as we saw, we cannot do baseband everywhere. So, I have this binary signal. I want to send it on, let's say we are going to, to use baseband. So I want to send it on a wire. So what can I do? What kind of coding, simple coding I can use to send my zero on my one? Zero plus five volts. So I use this coding. So I write a standard. We are going right now to write a standard. Let's say when I have a bit equal to zero, I send plus five volts. When I have a zero, a one to send zero. Okay, I do the opposite in my slide. But I don't put numbers. So can you imagine here, when I have a zero, I put zero volt. And when I put a one, I put five volts or half a volt. So this has two drawbacks. First one is that when I'm sending five volts, I am sending or receiving electron. But I never send them because we have a way zero volt, so I send nothing. So you may have some elect more electron in one side of the network than the other, and you can have some damage on electronics. So one best thing we say, for example, to say zero volt plus five, uh, one zero sorry, five volt plus five volt on one minus five volt. So this way, I am sending and receiving electron, and I have not uh, no more this problem. So this is one thing. But it's electronic, I don't care about electronic. The problem is that here, for example, I have 100 or 1,000 zeros to send on my wire. So what we'll do, I know, of course, I forgot here to say that 5 volt for, for example, delta t, uh, delta t time. I have to specify the time to send this information. So if I have 1,000 zeros to send, 
I will set them. So I have my clock. And I send this signal, this uh, voltage for 1,000 times, 100, uh, 1,000 times this is. But the receiver is not exactly at the same frequency. We saw that, for example, the temperature is different, so the quartz is a little bit different, and of course, what we do the receiver is to look at the value for a period of time and say, okay, here I have zero volt, so it's a zero. Here I have zero volt, it's a zero. Here I have zero volt, it's a zero. Here I have zero volt, it's a zero, etc. etc. And I am counting the number of zero I have, and I will say, I have 999 zero. So the sender was sending me 199 zero. And here we create a mistake because the sender was sending 1000 zeros and the other one understood only uh, 999. So here it's a problem because we have no modulation during this long period of time and we cannot, we have no different signal, so we cannot synchronize the receiver clock and the sender clock. So we have to avoid this kind of very simple modulation. So we have different way to, to do it. One way that was used, for example, by Ethernet, when you have Ethernet at uh, 10 megabit per second, is <coughs> to use what we call a Manchester coding, but says that when I want to send a bit equal to one, and in fact, I'm sending a transition from zero to one. Or from minus V volt to plus V volt. So we have an equilibrium in the number of volts because I'm sending a photon and an electron and I receive in one. So, and when I have zero to send, I'm sending a transition from one or plus V volt to minus V volt. So this is another this way, each time I'm sending a bit, I'm sending a transition. So this way, I will synchronize my clock at every bit. So what do you think of this? So it's a good solution because it was used in Ethernet. The problem is that when I'm sending, uh, for example, 10 megabit per second, I am modulating at 20 mega symbol per second. So for example, here you see that I have, I'm sending two bits, but I have four transitions. So that's a problem because maybe my copper Will physically will not be able to carry all this modulation. And if I don't have enough frequency, then the receiver will not be able to recover the signal. So at 10 megabit per second, for example, if with Ethernet it works, but at 100 megabit uh, 100 megabit per second it didn't work, and Ethernet changed its scheme. And the scheme used by Ethernet at 100 megabit per second was this one that says when I'm sending a one I use either plus V volt or alternatively plus V volt and minus V volt. So this one if I have a long sequence of one I will have, I will introduce transition. And then when I want to send a zero then I send zero volt. So that's the scheme used by Ethernet at 100 megabit per second. So what do you think of this? Here, if I have a long period of zero like this, 
then I may lose the synchronization. So, uh, the receiver. So, what do you propose? Mm, yes, no, but that's not what we will do here. In fact, what we are going to do is to code the information before sending it. And what I will do, it's a coding call for B, 5B. What does it mean? It means that when I have, for example, 0, 0, 0 to send, for B, for by the four bits, I will send something else. I put some stupid values you, you can find in the standard good value, but for example, I will send that. And this will be coded as 0 plus V volts, 0 minus V volts, 0. And this way, I introduce transition. So what does it mean? It means that here I have four bits. So four bits is 16 values. 16 possible values, and I am coding it on 5 bits. So 42 values. So what we are doing, I will select among these 32 values. I have to select 16 values that represent data. And from these 16 values, I will select those that have already a transition. So it means that when I am modulating here at 100 megabit per second. Here, the result will be 125 <coughs> megabit per second. If I look at Manchester, what we saw before, it can be viewed at 1 bit, 2 bit. It means that when I have a bit equal to 0, I send uh, 1, 0. And when I have a bit equal to 1, I send 0, 1. OK? So do I does it mean in here? I have two non-data values that don't represent binary values that are 0, 0, and 1, 1. Here is the same thing. I have my 32 possible values. I am using 16 for binary data. On system, uh, 16 remains for non-binary data. And in Ethernet, I will use one of these remaining information to say, for example, this is, for example, this one that is not representing a binary value, but say that the frame is starting. So I'm start sending a frame. Or this one, let's say, I'm finishing to send a frame. So we can use on the 16 remaining values some value to signal something on my frame. But that not, don't represent values, binary values. So there is no ambiguity because if I receive something, I know uh, if I know if it's a binary value or a signaling value. I have not uh, ambiguous. So that's the interest of this, uh, this kind of code. So it's what you will find in Ethernet, and you will find even more sophisticated scheme when you go to one gigabit per second, where you have eight bytes, 10 bytes, where, uh, eight bits, sorry, 10 bits. But the way you code the 10 bits, it's a state machine, and you have different uh, way to, to code. So this way you can detect errors or, or things like this. So this is some kind of, of coding. Of course, I, I don't go into uh, properties, but you can do that. When you are doing uh, broadband, as I say, you, you are going to use frequencies. So the simplest way to, uh, to do it is, for example, just to play with the phase of your signal. So when I have this phase, it's equal to a zero. And when I'm changing the phase, so I draw very badly, but I'm sending a one. So by playing with the modulation, 
by changing the phase of my signal, I can that way modulate some zero or one or just a change. For example, here, I know that I'm sending a zero at the beginning. And here I'm just say, I don't change the phase. So it means that I'm sending the same bit. And if I am changing the phase here, but it means that it's different, so it's a one. So we can have uh, those two, either sending directly the value, or using uh, differentiation and send just it's equal different, equal different, equal different. So this is one one possibility. Of course, you can play with the phase and using a p to to change the modulation, but you can also use quadratic. It means that you change us one from uh, uh, p and uh, p over two for fun. So this is on this way. If I am doing that on one modulation, I am able to send two values. So they have four possible modulations. So I can send two bits each time. So this is one possibility. And of course, you can play also with the amplitude of your signal, so the frequency, but we present it as the amplitude. And this way, you can modulate on one signal. You can modulate more and, for example, go to a very high rate because on one symbol, you send, for example, here for this. Okay? So this is some scheme that I use in, uh, in Wi-Fi, for example, to send the information. So for example, in Wi-Fi, you have different bands. You have overlapping bands, so it means that you have here some middle frequencies. So it's 2.4 uh, gigahertz, gigahertz. And here you say, for example, I'm using channel 6, so I will do modulation on that uh, on that channel. So this is one solution. Another solution that has been developed uh, recently is what we call OFDM. So I will not go into detail about OFDM because I am not a specialist of that. So I will tell you what I have understood of, of the technology. Uh, but what is the interest for us? So when which kind of uh, technology we, we find OFDM? So what is the idea of FDM is to have a special modulation. So use, instead of using one frequency and only do modulation on that frequency, is to divide your spectrum into small uh, frequencies. But using some modulation scheme, you avoid interferences between all these small frequencies. So this way, you are able to send the information on modulation we saw before on each of these small frequencies. And so this way you can multiply the boundary. So, for example, Wi-Fi is using this technology when you go to uh, uh, 54 megabit per second. And of course, when you go to 100 megabit per second, you are using this kind of, of technology too. But another technology that uses this is ADSL. So if you remember what we say about ADSL. So ADSL, we have your pods, your old telephony system that use a limited bandwidth on your cable that goes from your telephone to your, your provider network. And then you have some frequency but not touch. So what we'll do is the same thing, is to divide this spectrum into very small frequencies where we will do OFDM, we use OFDM techniques to send the information. So what is the difference between Wi-Fi and ADSL? Is that in Wi-Fi you will you have some very well known frequency, very well known speed, and you can change your modulation scheme, but it's for all the frequencies. In ADSL, what you will do is to, to look at each frequency, and some frequencies are well received by both ends, and some frequencies are not well received by uh, because you have some uh, problem with propagation with these frequencies. So for those where you have a, not a lot of error rate, 
So you will reduce the coding speed. For those where you have no errors, no too much problem, then you will increase the coding speed. So you will send more C a bit per modulation, per thing. So this way by possible. So this way you, you check all the frequency. Of course it can change. Some, someone is doing a friend phone call, so you may have some frequency that doesn't work very well, then you stop your phone call, then it works again. So the system is constantly probing all these frequencies and adapt the bandwidth to what is there. So if we look at ADSL, we have this first state where you have OFDM plus, so you adapt your frequency. We have still errors, so we are going to install a fake to correct some errors. We are going to see how it works. The problem is that errors usually arrive at the same time because you switch on the light and the light is doing some uh, electromagnetic radiation and it goes on your cable and makes some perturbation. So what we are going to do first is to change the bit order. So we are going to shuffle all the bits. So if in your cable you have some error here because you switch on the light, then in fact when you receive information you deshuffle things and the error will not be located at one place but will spread on several frames. And after that you do a fetch. And since you have less error on your, frame, on your frame, then it will be more efficient. The drawback of this uh, kind of things is that you have to delay the information to have enough frame to shuffle. So that's why, for example, ADSL is well known to introduce a lot of delay in transmission. And when you are doing gaming and you want to kill a monster, uh, it's very, you are not very happy because it takes a lot of time to, to cross the ADSL network. So that's why sometimes some provider allow you to disable these kind of things to increase the speed on your on your. Okay, so that's <coughs> some techniques we we can have at uh, Leo. Uh, 